Welcome once again to the Living Truth Broadcast. Greetings to all the listeners of this radio station and also greetings to those that are watching us on social media sites because as well as doing this broadcast over the radio in Ireland we are also videoing it and it's going out on YouTube, WhatsApp and Facebook and other social media sites so whether you are listening to us or watching us I greet you in the name that is above every name this broadcast is brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism a caring ministry a ministry that believes everything in the Bible we believe that all the gifts of the Spirit, including speaking in tongues, prophesying, we believe that they are in the church today, none have ceased, and they will remain in the church until Jesus comes. We believe that Jesus is still healing, is still delivering, and he's still working miracles today. And if you have a prayer request, we would like to pray for you there's a telephone number on your screen to those that are watching us to those that are listening to us the telephone number is zero seven 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 eight six nine zero nine three one that's zero treble seven eight six nine zero nine three one and for the benefit of those that can only hear us I will repeat that, that number throughout the broadcast. If you didn't get it, have a pen and paper ready. Of course, those of you that are watching us on social media sites, you will see the number on your screen. We do take prayer seriously in this ministry and we will pray for your healing. Now, please note, I do not claim to be a faith healer. I do not claim to be a healer. I only claim that we will pray to the one who is the healer, to the one who is the deliverer, to the one who is the saviour, to the one who is the miracle worker. His name is Jesus and in this ministry you will never hear me ask you to send money with your prayer request because you cannot buy the blessings of God. You cannot buy your salvation and as much as we do need money, if you want to support us, you're welcome to. You can contact us and we, you, we'll tell you how. You can co uh, financially support the ministry, but you don't need to send any money for your prayer request. You can just phone that number and we will pray over you. We are waiting right now to receive your call. I'm going to go straight in to the Word of God right now and I'm going to be reading from a verse of scripture that is found in Proverbs 16 verse 18 Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 it says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall this message came to me a few years ago when I was invited to be the guest preacher at the Healing Church of God in Christ, Forest Gate, the church that I was saved in, I was reading a book and I was studying on this issue of pride and boastfulness. 
and God began to deal with me and God began to reveal things to me that had to be changed because as I preach the word of God to you I'm also preaching it to myself I do not claim to be more righteous than anybody else I do not claim to be superior to anybody else but it's my desire to take the word of God to share the word of God that you and I will grow nearer to the Lord that you and I will adjust our ways so that we walk in obedience to the word of God and I began to take a look at the subject of pride and boastfulness over the years I have seen ministries that have taken years to build up by a man or a woman who laboured and put their trust in God but the problem is that as they got bigger their head grew as well and pride set in and even though it took that ministry years to build up it only took a little while for that ministry to fall apart it can take a long time to climb a mountain but if you fall off that mountain it only takes a few seconds to hit the ground and the Bible says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall I have seen talented people that could preach well that could sing well that had a great ministry but it fell apart because of pride and then I began to think about all those thousands of people that lives could have been changed by Jesus had they wholly humbled themselves but they were too proud to come to Jesus too much pride pride will send someone to hell thousands of people that could have been set free from alcohol drugs anger lust but were too prideful to admit they had a problem you cannot help someone who doesn't admit they've got a problem in Alcoholic Anonymous one of the first steps that person has to say is what their name is and that they are an alcoholic and to me that is like salvation we have to say my name is such and such I am a sinner I have fallen away my life is going contrary to the will of God and the moment that you admit that you're a sinner and call upon Jesus he comes into your life and he changes you instantly from being a child of the devil to a child of God the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things become new when you become a Christian you are cleansed from all sin and you are changed it doesn't mean that there's not going to be things in your life that are going to be need to be changed yet yeah, God is still working on you and he's still working on me and that is why we need to get into the Word of God we need to listen to the Word of God and that is why God has raised up people like myself and others to go and preach the Word of God so that people might know the Word of God and adjust their life according to the Word of God because friends victory does not come in how many scriptures you know but how many scriptures you obey knowing something and doing something is two different things I can't help wondering sometimes how many people have heard the gospel they've gone into a church maybe at Sunday school maybe they've walked past a street preacher but somehow they've heard the gospel but they were too proud to ask Jesus to come into their life they didn't want to humble themselves so as they walked past a street preacher or turned to the television if they had their friends with them they were more concerned about what their friends thought than their own relationship with God so they begin to mock and ridicule if pride is not dealt with it will destroy your ministry 
It will destroy your marriage. It will destroy any relationship that you're in. And it will destroy your business. And pride can destroy a country. What is pride? Well, a dictionary definition says a feeling that you deserve to be respected and admired by others. A prideful person only thinks of themselves. They want everyone to notice their new car. They want everyone to see how they've decorated their house and their new furniture. It's all about me, 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 me. The prideful person wants to walk in the room and be the centre of attraction. And they will get jealous if someone comments on somebody else's dress or someone else's nice house. They will get jealous. And you'll often hear a jealous person say, well, me too, I've done this, me too, trying to get the attention of that person on to themselves. A prideful person will talk more than anything else because they believe that they are impressing people. Prideful people are self-centered, self-orientated, self-motivated by the desire to impress and be honored. A prideful person will often feel that they are more important or better than other people. A prideful pastor, a priest or a bishop will probably think, oh, I preach better than anybody else. I am the best person here. I am the best person. They can only enjoy their own preaching. A singer, a choir leader, they are only happy when their choir is singing, when they are singing. They don't enjoy anybody else but themselves. And they will get jealous if someone else gets the attention that they are getting. And a prideful person will often try to bring other people down in order to build themselves up. They will often criticise, backbite, slander somebody else because they want to make themselves look good by making everybody else look bad. Pride often results in bragging. Pride makes us brag about things that are really not impressing anybody else but they think they are. Let me tell you friends, nobody is impressed by your new car. You can drive your new car around to the house, they come out, they look at it and you are on an ego trip and about 10 minutes afterwards they can't even remember that car, they're not thinking about that car. You can be a great singer and you stand in front of a lot of people and you sing and afterwards people are getting on with their life, they're not thinking about you anymore. You see friends, when you go on an ego trip, often you travel alone. I met a person once who had five telephones and the reason I know, I know he had five cell phones because he kept bragging about it. Every time he had the opportunity, he brought out this phone, that phone, this phone. He thought he was impressing people. Actually, he was just making himself look stupid because nobody enjoys listening to a person who's talking about themselves. I don't even want to go into a church where the preacher is talking about themselves. I want to go into a church where they're talking about Jesus Christ. Isn't it so wonderful to listen to somebody who's actually talking about how well someone else is doing rather than how well they are doing? Or if they do talk about, some people, they do, if they do talk about how well they are, because they want to go on an ego trip. Oh, my son's got his degrees. My daughter's got her degrees. And actually, as well, by bragging on their daughter, they're actually on an ego trip. They want to be admired. But they're not being admired. There are some people that think that what they have to say is so fantastic they want everyone else to hear. I have been in restaurants, not very often, but I do go to a restaurant now and then, and I have been in restaurants when it's pretty obvious that the people that are talking on the other table want everybody in the restaurant to hear what they are saying. 
They think that they are impressing everybody. I know a person that when he was sat down and talked to me, he would often look around, his eyes would wander everywhere to see if anyone else was looking. Because he felt that what he had to say was so impressive, he wanted everybody else. And actually, it was embarrassing. He thought he was being admired, but really everybody was thinking, why don't he just shut up? Why don't he just keep quiet? People get into debt in a ridiculous mo notion that they are going to impress people. They will buy a car they can't afford. They will buy clothes that they don't need and can't afford to buy, but they buy it because they are, want to impress other people. But the trouble is, friends, when you live that kind of lifestyle, you've got to keep spending more and more money. So if you're a woman and you go out and buy a dress to go somewhere, and in order to impress someone, you buy an expensive dress, then once they've seen it, you can't wear it again. So next time you go somewhere, you've got to go and buy another dress, and another dress, and another dress. You've got to keep spending with the idea that of trying to impress people, but you're not impressing people. Because two days afterwards, or even a day afterwards, they won't even remember what you wore. In fact, you could wear that dress another time and they probably won't even remember. Now, some will. Some people, that like to criticise everyone and say, oh, she wore that at the wedding. She wore that here. Friends, as a Christian, we need to get out of that habit. As a Christian, our lives should not be trying to draw attention to ourselves, but drawing attention to Jesus Christ. Pride can destroy your marriage. In 1 Corinthians 7, 4, it says, The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband's. And likewise, also the husband's have not power over his own body, but the wife. You see, pride in a marriage destroys the marriage. Because, friends, you want your wife to keep admiring you, or you want your husband to keep noticing you, you get upset. If he hasn't noticed your new hairstyle, your new dress, and he gets upset if he's not noticed, Pride will destroy a marriage because it's self-centeredness. It's all about me. See me. Notice me. Look what I've done. And it is good as in marriage, actually, for people to notice. I know I'm in the habit of looking around to see things that I can compliment my wife on. But my wife does it to me as well. By complimenting my wife, I am not drawing attention to myself but I'm drawing attention to something that she's done that is successful and she will do it to me and that makes me feel good as well because we all like to be praised, we all like to be admired and there's nothing wrong with that but we have to be careful that we don't do it out of pride and don't let it take over our life that everywhere we go we have to be the centre of attention because you might discover that the only one that is enjoying you is you. You may sit in a restaurant talking away, thinking that you're impressing people. You're only fooling yourself. You might be impressed. Everybody else thinks you've shut up. We just wish you'd shut up. Someone comes around with a new car and they think they're impressing somebody. But when they've gone, all they're going to say is, oh, he turned up in his new car. Bad bragging as usual, showing off as usual. Let's take a look at the consequences of pride. The consequences of pride. One, it will destroy your ministry. And the reason that pride destroys your ministry is because you are not honouring God. When you seek to be admired, when you seek to impress people, you're going to turn people off you. We are actually just robbing God because what we should be doing is drawing attention to God. We should be talking about our wonderful Jesus is. We should be talking about how great our God is. But when you keep 
in your ministry talking about me, me, I've done this, I went here, I preached in this country, I did this, I did that. You're getting the attention of, of God onto yourself. And there's nothing wrong in talking about something that you've done where God has used you in a particular area. But make sure that you word it in such a way that God gets the glory. Whenever you are sharing something about yourself, ask yourself this question. Am I doing it to honour God? Am I doing it to draw people's attention to Jesus? Or am I doing it because I want people to think how wonderful I am, how great I am? And if you've got that kind of attitude, it will destroy your ministry. I would know a man, I won't name him, but he had a growing ministry. His ministry grew from nothing to over 2,000 people. It was growing and growing and growing. But as his ministry grow, so did his head. And instead of talking about God, he would stand up in every meeting talking about himself and he would only call people to testify that were going to talk about him. So every time somebody testified in the church, they would talk about the great man of God, how they were healed by the great man of God, and it was all about him. And then that minister, in his pride, began to talk down about other preachers. He started to boast that his ministry was the fastest growing ministry in England. But the Bible says pride goeth before a fall. And it wasn't long after he made that statement that there was a split in his church. And today, instead of having over 2,000 people in his church, he lucky if he gets about 30, mostly it's about 15 to 20 people. You see, friends, nobody wants to listen to a person that is blowing their own trumpets. I don't know about you, I like to go on trips. If there is a trip to Margate, you can invite me. If you're going on a trip to the Caribbean, you can invite me. If your church is organising a trip, if you can invite me and if I'm free, I will come along. I love to go on trips to the seaside, on trips to the zoo, on trips to the country. I just love to do it. But if you're going on an ego trip, don't invite me. Because when you go on an ego trip, you're going alone. You may think the world is impressed by what you're saying. Really, it's only you that are impressed by what you are saying. A pastor, a deacon, a Sunday school teacher, a choir leader that seeks to be admired has lost the plot because they are focusing on themselves and that should not be. When I do this radio broadcast, I do not want to draw attention to Pastor McKivitt. I want to draw attention to Jesus Christ. I don't care whether you like me or hate me. I just want you to love God. Because it's Jesus who can save you. It's Jesus who can heal you. It's Jesus who can deliver you. You can admire me and you can admire any man. But I am not the healer. I'm not the deliverer. I'm not the saviour. But when I get you to look to Jesus, something is going to happen in your life. The best way to avoid pride is to make sure that everything that you do, whether you are talking, whether you are preaching, whether you are with your wife, your husband, whoever you may be, make sure that you are honouring God. And instead of praising yourself, look around to someone else that you can praise. If you are a preacher, instead of talking about how wonderful you are, talk about another preacher that you know. Admire somebody else and you will find people will respect you. People will love you when you do that. Prideful people often live in a fantasy island. 
because they think they're impressing others, but in reality, they're only impressing themselves. Nobody's really interested in them. They might talk about something that they've done and they think they're impressing, but all the others are, are looking at you, they're smiling, and they're thinking, what a bigot, what a show off. You're not impressing anybody. In fact, you're only making yourself look small when you try to impress other people. You see, friends, there's nothing wrong with having a big church, a big car, a big house, a well-paid job, but just make sure that as you grow materially, as you grow financially, as your ministry grows, as you get to a higher level in society, make sure that your humility grows bigger than your ministry. It grows greater than your social level. It grows bigger than your material wealth. Always make sure that you stay humble in all that you do. There's nothing wrong in testifying, but bragging should never take place. True testimony is giving honour to God for what he has given or helped you to achieve. Everything I am today, everything I'm doing today, whether it's on television, whether it's on the radio, whether I'm preaching in different churches, it's not because of what I am, but it's because of what he did for me. Oh, we've run out of time. I think I'll talk about this message a bit more in the next edition of The Living Truth. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKibbitt saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in Him, you shall be saved. Cause God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ.